Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today, of course, I join you here in Yeti form, but we're gonna be going back into the Twilight Forest, killing ourselves some bosses, and breaking some things with an uncrafting table. Yes, uh, it is enabled as of right now. So, I hope you guys are ready. So, starting off today, we are going to have ourselves some fun here on Seopolis, and uh, behind me, let's go ahead and take a look at some stuff that we had worked on. Um, notice I now have some yellow hearts, so I have basically three full health bars at the moment, and, um, that is courtesy of us killing chickens. <laughs> so, if we take a look at the, uh, the chicken mob imprisonment tool, uh, I'll show you kind of what I had set up in here. Basically, I still have the same sort of setup, I just have the mob crusher turned off. I went ahead and swapped out the floor, um, this is actually kind of nice, because all I gotta do is just break this block here, and then turn this back on and it'll just work like normal. Um, so, uh, with this set up, I mean, it's it's just as simple as placing a mob masher whenever I want to mash something. Which at the moment, I really don't need to mash too much, but I will go ahead and throw some chickens in here. We did test some other mobs. Chickens seem to be the best. And notice they drop the little hearts, which is kind of nice. Uh, but they also drop feathers and raw chicken. And uh, to filter that out, all I did was I added a uh, advanced... Uh, Basically, pipe upgrade, uh, set this to blacklist mode and blacklisted hearts from being pulled into the trash can because I don't really need all the other stuff. And that leaves me with miniature red hearts and some experience, which is kind of nice. Like, honestly, this experience is really useful. So um, I'm, I'm really thinking about uh, using this mob masher here as a way to fill one of these tanks with experience. And there's a couple of mobs that we can put in here that generate a lot of experience when they're killed. Um, so there's a couple of different types of mobs. Blazes do a really good job at that, um, but also uh, I believe the uh, the Guardians do a really good job of, uh, of killing these guys. And we actually have a Guardian. Uh, let's see. I believe we have a Guardian, right? Um, I think we spawned one in, in our mob imprisonment tool. Uh, there's a Thrasher. We should have one, at least I think so. There's a guardian, yeah. Must have been spelling it wrong. Um, so yeah, if I put this in here, we should be able to get experience and also get quite a bit of mob drops from here. However, I don't know if I want to com to keep all of the mob drops um, from the guardian. Maybe I'll keep a few because they do drop some really good stuff. Um, let's go ahead and throw this in here and just see what they drop. And it's gonna just spawn them in. They're gonna eventually end up in the center. I gotta close this up. <laughs> Tinted glass. Oh boy, because yeah, they're gonna start pouring out of here if I don't. There we go. And let's see, I wonder if they're gonna get killed easily from that. That might actually take a long time to kill them. Wow, I didn't realize. Maybe guardians aren't going to be a good thing to use. I mean, Blaze might be even worse, I don't know. Because Blaze can fly up. I do see experience now starting to flow in. So yeah, they will eventually die. So this is generating quite a bit of experience, actually. Even though it looks like a mess and makes a lot of noise, it does generate quite a bit of experience in here. And um, it's going to add up quickly. I went ahead and set up a filter to go ahead and keep these uh, yellow hearts. And <laughs> it's a mess. But uh, yeah, just went ahead and set it the same way just to generate some experience while we're working on other things. So before we head back into the Twilight Forest and get some more of that stuff done, I know that it is hard to see sometimes, so I would like to get myself some night vision, and I can do that with Mystical Agriculture. And uh, we can basically get ourselves an augment that we can apply to our helmet that will give us night vision, like actual night vision. Um, now, because we have auto crafting set up for our essence, it's not too difficult for us to take that essence that we have and set up actual auto crafting or de auto crafting of our essence. De crafting, I think that's probably the best way to put it. Um, what we're going to need to do is we're already crafting up to Supremium, so we don't need to auto craft Supremium. However, Imperium, we can say, okay, craft down from this to get to this. So that's pretty simple, right? And we keep doing the same thing. So this to this. And we don't need any special tools or anything. We just craft down. Very simple. We do not, however, want to craft down into Inferium Essence. If we craft down into Inferium Essence, we get into this kind of loop situation that we might end up getting into. 
uh, which I don't want to get into because we have it. Um, we have the Inferium essence or Imperium essence being crafted uh, once it gets past a thousand. So if we craft any more than a thousand, that's already setting at, then it will automatically start the loop. And well, we don't want that to happen. So we should be fine with just these crafts. That's kind of why I left that buffer there of a thousand or so um, essence. Now, what what we need to actually start crafting though is getting all the auto crafts ready for all the ingots and all of the gemstones uh, because each one of these needs to be set up and this will just pull the auto crafts it's just going to make it so much easier to craft all the armor and just everything else that we're going to need like for tools and things later on down the road we can just set up the tools and it's just simple to click one button and bam we can auto craft it so i think i have all the auto crafting set up for everything as you can see right here everything with a chest piece because we already have the chest piece so if i go to mystical agriculture we should see now that we have access to the supremium and let's see how quickly we can craft one of these i'm sure it's almost instant yeah it's basically instant i have speed upgrades in there so one of those and that nets us all of the different armor pieces that we're going to need including the boots. Hopefully we have everything for that. Yes, we do. And voila, we now have a full set and auto craftable for this. Now I need to remove the enchants off of this and apply it to the rest of my armor here. So I think I have most of the enchants ready. I even have the protection to add extra protection to get it to protection five over here. Um, so all I have to do now is hope for the best. I have all of this stuff here that's gonna be applied to this helmet. I don't honestly know if we need unbreaking. Like, I feel like unbreaking may be like an extra thing that we just don't need. But I'm hoping I have the ability to put all of this on there. I do. Perfect. So this is going to give us like some really nice enchants. And then I'm going to throw that protection on there. I was going to give that protection five. Oh, that is that is so nice. <laughs> this is going to be some nice protection armor here. We're gonna have protection five on all of our armor pieces. That's, yeah, that's some pretty pretty nice stuff there. Um, now, as far as essence, we are running low on essence. I probably should address that. Um, and to do that, all I have to do is just turn this off. We have a lot of experiences basically going into this to be able to produce this, these things. And if I just leave it for a moment, you can see our essence now starts to fill back up from our other mob farm. Um, our mob farm does a pretty decent job. Now, as far as pants go, uh, it's pretty easy. Um, and then our boots. Our boots are, are a little bit different. Um, I'm going to apply Depth Strider 3 to these. Um, I also applied Respiration to our helmet. Um, now, the only thing that I want to remove is the Shadow Step. Um, I may apply those later, but going into the Twilight Forest, I think they're, we're going to run into some issues with uh, some of the, the mobs, uh, some of the bosses that are going to need to know that we exist. And so it's really hard uh, for some, uh, something like, I don't know, the, the dragon. It won't know we're there, so it won't shoot fireballs at us. And thus, it's going to make it really hard to complete that challenge. So um, instead, I will put Shadow Step on later. It's not a big deal to not have Shadow Step. It just basically means mobs can't detect it when to like detect me when they're around. Um, so that's one thing. Now, as far as what goes on pants, I don't really know. I mean, a protection and then putting protection five on the pants. I, I do want mending on all this stuff later on, but making sure we have protection five. I mean, that's basically it. And then uh, the Twilight Forest is going to be a little bit easier on us. So here we go. Uh, to get that night vision, the whole reason why I made the rest of the armor suit was literally just to get the night vision. We're just going to throw this on here just like so. <laughs> and then we should have night vision. I think... I think there's a way to toggle it on and off, I hope, uh, other than like throwing our armor into here and, and doing that. So I put this in, we put night vision in, bam, and apply it. And now you can see we have night vision. You know, it's honestly not bad. Not bad. It does allow you to see underwater, which I think is is fantastic, especially for uh, for a pack that literally is all about being underwater. And these guys actually look like they look like above ground. Without night vision, they look like this. They look dark. Like, well, actually, I don't know how long. Ten, ten seconds. They look rather dark. And I didn't realize they were white until we put them inside our mob killing machine. 
But yeah, this is going to definitely help out in the Twilight Forest. Let's go see what this actually looks like in the Twilight Forest. I'm kind of interested, just as curious as you guys are. Let's see. It is much brighter now. It does kind of lose that like ambience uh, of all the lighting, but that's okay. We're here to destroy some mobs, like actually wreck some mobs. Um, now, what all stuff do we have to like? What do we have to do now? Well, we can of course check our guide, go over here, and uh, we need to kind of pay attention to this. We have a couple of routes we can go. We can go with the Alpha Fur route. We can start messing around with uh, the Urgast area. Um, and like a prerequisite, which gets us here. Um, usually, the best route to probably go is the Beef Stroganoff. That's going to get you to the Hydra. And uh, then we can also do the Yeti or do the other trophy area. Um, that's going to be in the Dark Forest. Uh, but I think the, the Stroganoff is probably going to be the best route. Now, to get to this, um, you see that scary, like, nasty teal color <laughs> with the red in the middle and the dragon head? Yeah, that's where we need to go to at the moment. And those little uh, dots that are around it in that dirty, like, teal color, blue, I don't even know what color that is. That area, that's where the maze is at. And honestly, the maze is going to be, it, it's, it's always a, a punishment for me. It almost seems like the maze is such a difficult thing because it, it literally is a maze. And so I spend so much time. I don't even think I brought any torches. This has nothing in it? What? Also, yeah, these things are kind of cool. What is this? That's a cool looking ladder. Look at that ladder from the Twilight Forest, an iron ladder. There is nothing in these chests. I I feel like I've been bamboozled. <laughs> Why are all the stuff? Oh man, usually there's some stuff in here. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, torches would be nice, but of course we're gonna have the ability, uh, <laughs> we're gonna have the ability to, uh, to break through most of the stuff. Um, which feels kind of cheaty. Like, this pick right here is incredibly fast. Um, and then uh, also having night vision, which uh, makes it so we can definitely see. There we go. I'll grab a couple of torches just to be able to mark some stuff. We're going to find torches when we get in there anyways. So, let's head into the, the awful maze. That's what I'm going to call it from this point on. It is literally the awful maze, which is right over here. This mound thing. Oh, these things are... It just gives me so many flashbacks of all the times that I have done the Twilight Forest. And this is the one thing that ends up taking the longest. Now, you can get lucky and make a map focus. I did not bring any paper to make a map or a compass. So, yeah, that was probably a bad mistake. So, yeah, this is exactly what I'm going to have to do. I've got to spin around this maze over and over again until I find... A spot while also dealing with minotaurs and creepers and all did you just like speed that was crazy fast but yeah this stuff sometimes there'll be map focuses and stuff in here i'll grab that paper maybe i will be able to make a map i don't know here's some of the things that you'll encounter along the way oh that one picks you up and it's nasty oh and the slime guys they shoot you with slime <laughs> These, this one shoots fire at you. This one picks you up. Look, they're, they're tag teaming me. Get out of here. Crazy. We take like absolutely no damage though, which is insane. And this is one of the main maze rooms. Uh, but you gotta be very careful. These guys, most of all. We definitely need to break that spawner. Do not want to deal with these guys. But down here is a pressure plate. And it's wooden. Which means it can set this TNT off, which blows everything else up. So we definitely want to hop in here and grab all of this. And there's a maze, mo uh, a maze focus. I don't think there's any redstone in any of these chests. If there is, oh, there's another maze of focus. Charm of keeping. All of these things are really nice. I'm going to keep all of the stuff that we're gathering here. Um, but yeah, if I had enough to make a map, I think this right here needs... Is it just paper? Oh, it's just paper. So we just need to find enough to make paper. And there's the uncrafting table um, that we can use this map focus for. I'm pretty sure the uncrafting table is not going to allow us to uncraft things. It's probably disabled in the configs. I would almost guarantee. But you never know. So I do need to find some more chests because I've already found a couple pieces of paper. 
Um, and I also have yet to find the exit. I found a lot of torches, though. Kind of nice. And I have found the room right here. This is the room that's going to lead us to the next area. And uh, yeah, we just have to break this and hop our way down here. All right, so this is actually a pretty simple one. We have two hallways here. As you can see, this is surrounded by bedrock. So do not think you're going to be getting around this because you're, you're probably not. Um, but without that maze map focus, we're not really going to be able to find... I already found the boss. <laughs> without that maze map focus, you're probably not going to be able to find your way um, to the secret room that is in here. So yeah, I think I should be able to kill this guy pretty quickly. Oh, did he just blow up my chest? So there we go. So we have to kill that boss, which I know is very simple to do, as you can see, and we get access to all of loot. It's big loot though is the meat stroganoff, and that is something we actually need to consume. Um, so I guess I can go ahead and eat that, right? We'll go ahead and take all the other stuff as well over here. Might as well. Uh, let's see. Yeah, TNT. Who, you know, we can take all that. Milk. Uh, I guess that would be what milk for like mining fatigue. Uh, but yeah, if we eat the stroganoff, that is going to basically unlock our next section. Now I need to turn off the auto feed in order for us to lose enough to be able to eat. But yeah, that was the that was the boss room. Now to find the other area, I mean, it's just a matter of like mining, and we can mine through this stuff pretty quickly with this pick. So it pretty much is a. a, a already a maze breaker and that's kind of the thing you're going for in this but we really don't need a maze breaker i don't think like really yeah i don't think i don't think we're gonna need a maze breaker so now i have to find my way out of this maze and also eat the stroganoff so after all that <laughs> i am now ready to go uh, let me change this back to fast um and we should really eat our meat stroganoff there we go that is the mighty stroganoff that should unlock the next section which allows us to actually kill the Naga. Or, not the Naga. The, is it the Naga? Now I don't even know. <laughs> or the Hydra. We're going towards the Hydra. Wow, Chosen. Um, you'd think I would know these things. All right, so we're heading this way. By the way, the new wood types and stuff is super, super cool. Like, there's all these different wood types. And um, I even noticed there was a new biome. By the way, this is a cork frog. <laughs> cork frog here. Ooh, frog legs. Ooh, I think these can actually... Are these a potion recipe? Oh no, these aren't the potion thing. Golden? Actually, you know what? Yes, this is. This gives you a jump boost. You can turn them into golden frog legs. That's kind of cool. Yeah, like, I don't remember this. these areas looking this good. <laughs> um, so, notice the, like, dust particles. Yeah, this is the... Uh... Was the Hydra. You know what? I'm going to remove Optifine and see if this fixes the head issue. <laughs> so with Optifine gone, yes, that was definitely the issue. So if you are running Optifine, remove that. I mean, it kind of warns you. And yeah, you're going to hit these back, but you're going to technically want to hit them back into their mouth, not before they hit the ground. So if you can hit them, hit them as they're starting to fall. Don't get close enough that they can hit you with fire. Um, but get close enough, like this right here, I think is about to shoot flames. This can pretty much kill you. Uh, I think there's a okay way of telling whether or not it's going to be a fireball or not. If you start seeing the particles first, like this is going to be a fireball. And you're going to hit that back of the head. That's going to be fire. Yeah. So if you see smoke particles, <laughs> you know it's going to be a fireball. If you see flame particles, you know it's going to be fire. And you want to get kind of close to this guy. And yeah, hit those back of the head. Like, this is going to be fire. Get out of the way. And it doesn't do too much damage to hit them from the bottom here. But don't really deal with that. Let's see. Fireballs? Nope. Flames. Double flames. Look at that. So yeah, you definitely want to pay attention. This is how you're technically supposed to kill it? Man, another flames. I'm waiting for those fireballs. That's another flame. Man, they're just shooting all flames. Maybe I need to be standing a little further back. We're getting too close. All right, there we go. We can get them all back. There we go. 
Perfect. Nice. Okay, so that was pretty good. Oh, we're taking fire damage. Which surprisingly, we're not taking like hardly any damage, actually. Yeah, this is how you're going to want to kill them. It, it may take a little bit of time. You could also probably walk up and try it as well. But if they're both doing it at the same time, that's not going to work, is it? You got to try and aim it at their heads. Um, you could also probably walk up and try to hit their heads. It's probably, it will work. But at the same time, like, it's, it feels a little cheaty. Right? Yeah, they will lose a head, and then we'll gain back even more heads. Um, so, yeah. And then, I don't even think... I don't know if you can continue attacking. Yeah, you can. So, yeah, eventually you can kill them. We kill the Hydra. Actually, I think you have to manually kill the hy Hydra with melee damage in order to be able to um, complete that section. Um, so, I, I don't know. But that's that quest complete. And, uh, well, we now have ourselves some Hydra Chops, which these things are incredibly fulfilling, or cred incredibly filling. You also got Fairy Blood, and Fairy Blood is is pretty nice as well, because um, it gets you these uh, fiery, uh, or fiery blood, sorry, not fairy blood, uh, and get the fiery ingots. And these can be used to make some pretty nice uh, gear, like right here, burns attackers. Um, and, oh, also, if you noticed... Let's see, let's go back to the ingot. I think it's used in a recipe. By the way, this is used to make the ingot that is used to make this. Right here. So yeah, we need these to make seeds. Oh, I guess we can just make seeds of them. I don't know if they're going to be required. I, you know what? I actually do think they're required for the main like ending of everything. But as far as our quest goes, we have just completed... More sections of this, and it looks like we're going in the right order. <laughs> so this is the order that I would normally do it in. The next would be going after the uh, Yeti. Now, the Yeti is not hard either, and we might have a little bit of time to be able to do this. I don't know. I'm going to check and see. The Yeti is actually pretty easy um, out of everything. Like, is, as long as you're prepared, it's pretty easy, and it also comes with some incredibly powerful uh, like ice bomb things that you can use on other mobs. Which pretty much freezes them and one kill, one shot kills them, uh, which, like I said, is really powerful. Yeah, all we have to do is head all the way down here, like we're going to be going to the uh, the queen, the ice queen. Uh, but instead, we're going to be heading hitting up these uh, like uh, I don't know coves. I don't even know what they're called, mountains, ice mountains, something like that. We're gonna be right here. I think we were right by one earlier. Look at all this uh, this stuff. Oh, beautiful. And it should be snowing. Eh, maybe not. Yeah, this is the ice cove that I was talking about. Inside there's the spawner. I have no idea what this guy is. That is walking right here. What? Who are you? What are, what are you doing? What in the world? Hello? Ooh, what are you from? The dungeons mod? Okay. <laughs> get, get, get smacked. These guys are going to drop fur. Of course, the big guy in the middle is the Alpha Yeti. And yeah, he does this weird thing, and all you got to do is just smack him down. A couple of a couple of hits, and the, the Alpha Yeti is dead. Uh, but it does drop those uh, ice bombs, which are pretty cool. Like, I think we can use an ice bomb on this. And look, it immediately killed it. It turned it into ice. It's dead. 100% dead. If you want to get the rest of the Yeti fur, go ahead and kill these guys, and that's going to get you the Yeti fur, which actually makes a pretty cool cosmetic armor set. Not gonna lie, it's pretty cool looking. I was actually wrong. You have to kill the Alpha Yeti to get that really cool armor set. But honestly, it's just the Alpha Yeti head piece that looks really cool. Um, but I am gonna kill enough of them <laughs> to uh, to get the full set. Yeah, and like I said, you just seen how easy it was. This guy is trapped enough in itself. Look at that. To just oh my goodness. It's, yeah, this sword is pretty pretty nice, and so is this armor. So after doing all this to get the Yeti fur, I just realized the Yetis sit down and cry after a moment. Ooh, these guys are cool. 
The Yetis sit down and cry. Like, you hit them, they throw a fit, they're like little babies. <laughs> I didn't even realize that's, that's their animation. Yeah, they sit down and like pout for a minute and like literally cry. So I went ahead and crafted the uncrafting table and uh, it works. It works. It costs experience to do, uh, but it does work. Uh, all you got to do is put the item that you want to uncraft in here and then pull one of the items out. It will consume your experience, but you're uncrafting the item and we have unlimited experience. So... It does work, and I don't know how powerful this is, and I don't know what items I could potentially uncraft that would get me high tier stuff. I don't think there's, I don't know if there's anything like that. Um, but it does cost experience, so it does come at a little bit of a cost. Mob drops would be the only thing that I could think of um, that could potentially be powerful for this, and or like gear and stuff. Hmm. Ah, okay, so one thing I can definitely see it being useful for is uncrafting things down into essence that we would potentially not have essence for. So such as the fish essence and this essence. Pretty interesting. Like, this stuff can be broken down in essence, however, it does cost some stuff. Um, it does cost some experience. Okay, I may have just found something that definitely breaks it. <laughs> That definitely makes this worth all of it. Um, so, any of the charms that costed things that you have found in loot chests, such as our cracked black diamond scale, yeah, it gives you two of those. Um, and if we take a look at what it actually costs to make the uh, <laughs> this token, it's uh, it's not cheap. It's not cheap. It requires the silt, which uh, requires you to break down with this one of your charms or a block of diamond in order to get this stuff so i mean is it horribly expensive i don't know but you could break this down into even more things and i think if i'm not mistaken if we uncraft the silt here i want to test this down uh we can change the recipe <laughs> um this might uh, this might totally get patched um so uh what is that bobbles mod okay so if we craft the silt, um, it's not too horribly expensive, right? To make this and a block of diamond. I just want to see what this looks like when we uncraft this material. So this stuff. So it gives us that, but um, if we have more than one of these, right? Because some things give you two. Okay, so it doesn't let us change that or does it oh oh that's broken <laughs> so yes we can pull out uh anything from here if we want any of these um charms um yeah and if we put two of the silts in here so we have another diamond block and we put two in now we have access to, I believe, everything that gives us this. Yeah. Um, just a little, little broken. Five of them will give us the ink charm. That's how, that's how broken that is. Um, yeah, just to show five. <laughs> we have officially broke the pack. Where's the charm? There it is. And I can pull that out. Well, we now get grants immunity to most negative status effects. Uh, we literally have uh, a charm that can do anything. Like, we don't even need this charm anymore, I don't think. Uh, because it does everything, including what vitamins do. Um, and I believe it goes into the charm slot. Where is the charm slot? I feel like, is it this slot? Oh my gosh. Yeah, and we don't even need we don't need any of these these things. Oh, that's broken. That's uh sorry guys. I hope I <laughs> I'm sure this will get fixed. Yeah, it gives us immunity to everything. It um Yeah, I'm sure that's gonna be fixed. I don't even think you can craft the charm normally. Yes, you can. It just requires this. Honestly, we we have pretty much everything to be able to make the charm. All we have to kill is some strays. 
Well, I mean, it's not that crazy if you look at it this way, but we can make everything else. That's uh, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, and unfortunately, that's why the the uncrafting table always gets like usually disabled. Um, I don't know if it will in this pack. I was just using it as an example. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> so of course, I do want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And that huge thank you is going to go to, if I can spell things right, is gonna to go to the Ritzy Fox. Thank you so much for your amazing support. Also, the Dolphin supports you as well. Thank you for your amazing support over on Patreon. And of course, guys, if you are interested in becoming a Patreon yourself, of course, you can find that link down in the description below. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Of course, if you did, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and also give this video a huge thumbs up. Guys, I really appreciate it. Of course, I'll see you in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.